Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Carol. Welcome to the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, on this beautiful, beautiful December Sunday morning. I'd like to welcome everyone who's here today, whether you're with us in the sanctuary or you're visiting with us online. You are so welcome. You are so welcome to the Temple of Light. And we know that if you're visiting from overseas and you're here for Christmas, this is going to be just an absolutely beautiful Christmas. Let us begin as we begin all things with an opening affirmative prayer. Please join me. In this moment, we recognize that there is one presence. This presence is God. This presence is the present, the present moment that God fills. This present is in us as us so that we are the present. In this Christmas season, we acknowledge that right where we are, we are the way God is. God lives in us as us. And as we accept this, we radiate this so that joy, peace, light, and love are the essence that fills our atmosphere. So in this season of light and love and peace, we accept a God-filled, light-filled, joy-filled experience this morning as that light radiates through and from every person who participates in this service this morning. God is here. We are here. And God in us brings light and love and joy to each person with whom we interact, giving thanks, giving thanks, giving abundant thanks for the magic of Christmas. Thank you, God, that this is now so. And so it, so is. it is. Our inspirational reading this morning is a Christmas letter from Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder. And it reads, Christmas is for remembrance. The love manifested through our gifts to each other typifies the offer of life and the givingness of spirit to its creations. The hands of the eternal are outstretched through our hands and the heart of the infinite beats in the human breast. But the giver must give of himself, for the gift without the giver is bare. It is not then in lavish gifts that we find true giving, but in the sweet simplicity of remembrance, in the kindly thought, the tolerant mind, and the gentle act Love alone can give love. Sympathy alone can sympathize. And only goodness can really do or be good. The one who gives for reward does not give at all. He seeks to bargain, to trade for spiritual gifts. Hence, he senses a loss in his own giving and finds no completion through the act. But he who gives half his meat to the hungry feels justified and is warmed by a real sense of comradeship. He has established an actual unity between himself and other offspring of creation. Great causes succeed when there is a giving of humanity to humanity. With a check must come the one who writes it, his interest, his enthusiasm, his love. The check must be a symbol of his desire to impart of himself. Then shall it multiply its benefits and do good. Charity is cold. 
but love is warm. When heart speaks to heart, a divine conversation has taken place, a heavenly discourse. Each of us has something to give. Let each see that he gives of his best. If we are bringing our gifts to the altar of love, nothing less than the best will be acceptable. Nothing less than all is enough. May the real spirit of Christmas, the giving of the self to life, enter and abide in you now and through all times. Sincerely, Ernest Holmes. So now we can sing our praise song. <laughs> that, was, that was just such a beautiful letter. You could feel Ernest Holmes here. So let's open. Sing the chorus, clap your hand as we give up ourselves to this morning, to this service. Please stand. remain standing. It is on the screen for those of you watching online. The Temple of Light, center for spiritual living, is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ's peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and, and to liberate, liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in, in any way. The, the light of the Christ, Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our, environment. our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so it is. Thank you. Be seated. reluctant candle there. <laughs> we have just lit the youth candle, so let us say the blessing for the youth. We love you. We appreciate you. We salute the Christ in you, and we see you as shining lights onto your world. God is blessing you now.
and so, so it is. is. And if you're young at heart, accept that too. Now we're gonna do our mission song for all you who need a little waking up this morning. <laughs> announcements for today, Sunday, December the 19th. Again, I'd like to welcome all who are with us today. If there are any first-time visitors this morning, I'm not seeing any, but if there are any online, please announce yourself so we can acknowledge you properly. We welcome you to our hearts and to our beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living Center and a special welcome home to those people who have not been with us for a while. We trust you will come again and again to share your consciousness with us. We continue to live stream every Sunday at 9 a.m. and on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. The recording of these services is also available later on YouTube. The schedule of our temple activities, including our enriching classes conducted by our blessed ministers, is posted online on our Facebook page. Now to register for these classes, kindly visit classes.templeoflightcsl.org where you can obtain the Zoom links. We have something very special called a wisdom circle. And everyone is invited to stay behind this morning at 10.30 for Sing the Chorus, an hour of Christmas carol singing hosted by our Wisdom Circle and led by our musical angel, director, Mrs. Angela Elliott. It's funny, you know, there was a typo here that said Mrs. Angel Elliott. <laughs> Not, not a typo at all. <laughs> and remember to join Reverend John Scott for quiet moments in the garden, and that's in his garden, on Monday mornings at 6 a.m. for his refreshing and insightful early morning pickup. And it's not very long. You should be up at 6 a.m. already anyway. <laughs> yeah. On Tuesdays at 6 p.m., we have our spiritual enrichment service, which is on Facebook and on Zoom. This week, our presenter will be practitioner Steve Golding. The link is sent out from our mailing list, so check that out. Our Lifeline series, and if those of you who have been watching the Lifeline series knows how special it is. So we're bringing um, our Lifeline series bringing 2021 to a close on Thursday, December the 30th at 6 p.m. Our very special guest will be Reverend Dr. Petra Weldes of the Dallas Center for Spiritual Living. And she will be speaking on the subject, Every End, a Beginning. Join moderator Sandra Cooper and Reverend John Scott for this hour of liberty, love, and laughter. Christmas and New Year's. Hmm. It's already. <laughs> Our Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve services 
will be virtual this year. Join Reverend Sonia Davidson and practitioner Steve Golding at 10.30 on Christmas Eve, that's December the 24th, for O Holy Night, a candlelight celebration of the Christ consciousness. So that's Christmas Eve. On New Year's Eve, which is December the 31st, at 10.30 p.m., Reverend Anne will lead us in the prayerful closure of 2021 and a joyous welcome of 2022. Now, to begin the new year, we are offering a very special spiritual prosperity adventure. The deadline for the early bird offer of 26,250 Jamaican dollars has been extended to December the 31st. So take advantage of the savings by registering online. There is an informative interview on our Facebook page with Liz Terry and Denise Williams, two, are two of the presenters for the seminar. So please listen and share it with your social media contacts. We continue to respond with prayer to the challenges of this special time. A practitioner is available to pray with you immediately following our service every Sunday. On duty this Sunday is practitioner Sandra Cooper. The number to call is 876-289-0907. If you wish to speak with a minister, you may do so from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 12 midnight by calling the same number, 876-289-0907. And if you feel moved to support our ministry, kindly visit our donate page at donate.templeoflightcsl.org which has all our banking details. Thank you so much for your generosity and for helping us to be a beacon of light in the world. This concludes our announcements. Now kindly join us in singing that wonderful first hymn, Good News. Please stand. The words are in the program. Bring you good tidings, good news, good news. Come hear what the angels say. Good news, good news. Great joy and gladness abiding. For Jesus, the Son of God, is born to the world today. I bring happiness and joy, good news, to cheer you along the way. To banish your sadness, pain and gloom. Keep you singing each day. Good news, good news. Behold, I bring you good tidings. Good news, good news. Come hear what the angels say. Good news, good news. Great joy and gladness abiding. For Jesus, the Son of God, is born to the world today. I bring everlasting peace, good news. Part. Good news, good news, behold I bring you good tidings, good news, good news, come hear what the angels say, good news, good news, bring joy and gladness abiding, for Jesus, the Son of God, is born to the world today, I bring everlasting peace, good news, Bring freedom for the slave, and I am the blessed Son of God, the strong and mighty to save. Good news, good news, behold, I bring you good tidings. Good news, good news, come hear what the angels say. Good news, good news, bring joy and gladness abiding. The Son of God is born to the world today. Good news, good news, good news. Go.
you sound wonderful. <laughs> and now it's time for Reverend John Scott to bring you some good news. This is the Christmas season, and his, should I give it away? No, I'm not gonna give it away. <laughs> Just sit back and listen, take notes, take it all in. Here's Reverend John with good news. Ah, oh, good morning, Worldwide Spiritual Family. It's so nice to, to, I'm glad for you, you know. I'm glad to know that those of you who we can't see, they're on land with us the same way. So Ernest Holmes letter spoke about when one speaks from heart to heart, something magical happens, doesn't it? Uh, in, the, in our lives and in the entire world. And something for me is happening quite magically all over this land we love called Jamaica and indeed across the entire globe. It, there is kind of something special and indefinable and wonderful about this time of year. And it is, I believe, the good news. So you know, a friend of mine, her five or six year old granddaughter was badgering her about what she's giving her for Christmas. And she said, you know, I've been thinking, I was thinking about giving you a tin of green peas. I, you know, I, I, I love green peas. It's my favorite go-to snack and I got a whole case of them at Price Mart. I won't give you a whole case though because I want some for myself, but I'll give you a few tins, maybe half a dozen, with the child's face you can imagine. Just absolutely perfect. Green peas, Grammy? And then she must have remembered that it's not the gift, it's the love with which it is given that's so important. And so she said something that, you know, when children do this to you, they can have everything you have and more. She said, oh, well, Grammy, if it comes from you, I know it's given with love, and I will love it. You know that she, the entire estate was willed to her immediately. So... I love that story, it resonates with me because it takes me back to <laughs> the genesis of my love for outrageous socks. And I've, told this, this, I've told you this before, but I had an aunt, bless her heart, she was called Aunt Tiny, and wherever she is on her onward journey in the light, I hope she's wearing a pair of socks. Every Christmas, she gave me a pair. They were either black, brown, or blue. I never wore them. And after a few years, I stopped even opening them. I just put them in my socks drawer. And then, one year in my early teens, my father burst through the bedroom door. And I was busy m building something with what was called a Meccano set that my favorite uncle had given me for my birthday in October. This was near Christmas, though, and he said, Good news, good news, son. Aunt Tanya has sent you a Christmas present early. <laughs> Hear me, thank you, Dad. Put it in a little socks drawer for me. I never even looked up. And Dad had a, 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 a theory that one shouldn't eat one's porridge when it is hot. You know, we said in Jamaica, no, eat your porridge when it's hot. Meaning when you're angry or vexed or down or uh, not feeling your best and highest self, don't deal with the matter then. Put it down for later. So nothing was said at dinner that night. And next evening, I got the loving lecture. Now, at the same time, my parents are a trip, you know. I have to say, and grandparents. If you wanted to do something when I was a teenager, don't tell your parents that everybody else is going to be there or going to be doing it, because that was surely the cue for them to say, no, you're not go. Well, there was a musical group called Bill Haley and the Comets. Mm -hmm. Some of you, I don't want to give away your age paper, may remember. And Bill Haley and the Comets were due to perform in Jamaica. And of course, what did my parents say? You can't go. But daddy, everybody is going. You're not everybody. You can't go. So next the night, after I got this early gift from my aunt at dinner, daddy said, you know, son, 
Your aunt deprives herself of something every year to give you what you might consider to be a very unimaginative gift. And, but it's given with love. And I want to suggest that you may want to consider opening this present tonight after dinner. There may be a good reason why Aunt Tani gave you the present so early. So reluctantly, I went to my room after dinner and I opened the packet. And it was a pair of socks. But guess what? They were neon green rock around the clock socks, which was named after one of the popular songs of Bill Haley and the Comets. And along with the socks, not one, but two tickets, box seats to the show. Good news, good news. Come hear what little Jolly I say. Good news, good news. Me I go Bill Haley and the Comets today. So I was overjoyed. And for the first year, it came to me how important it is that we acknowledge the gift, the gift of self that people give from their hearts, no matter how humble it may be, and whether it be a tin of green peas or a plain pair of socks, when it comes from the heart, it is something really special. Yes, so the good news, my friend, I've titled my encouragement, of course, Good News, Good News. And historically, the good news of Christmas proclaimed by Christian uh, preachers all over the world, all, all through the years, comes from John 3.16. And I quote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all those who believe might not perish but have everlasting life. And this only begotten, you know, has been used to, to spread the, the news or the idea that Jesus was the exception, that there was something exceptional about him, and that he was the only begotten son of God. So what happened to you and me then? We're not begotten. Yes, we are. And so in each of us, there is that which is begotten, of the one source, the one energy, the one presence, the one invisible source of all good. Each of us is only begotten of God. And I, that is the message I want to leave with you as we prepare to celebrate Christmas. Because it wasn't an exceptional thing. Jesus came to, to teach us that we too are begotten of something so great, so beautiful, so tender, so loving, so joyful, so perfect, that if we could only just grasp that as the, our reason for being, as, as who we are, and whose we are, and why we have come, our lives would be entirely different stories. And in fact, the same angelic voices that welcome the coming of Jesus, the boy, the son of a carpenter and a young girl who discovered the Christ. And you see, Christ wasn't Jesus' last name. You know, we, we talk about Jesus Christ, but Christ wasn't his last name. Christ is the principle of sonship and daughtership, which has been bestowed on each and every one of us on this journey of light and life and truth that we have undertaken and so, the good news is, is that you are the Christ, begotten of the Father, only of the Father. Nobody else could bear you. Nobody else could bring you. But you know, friends, a lot of us are begotten of a lot of very mistaken ideas. You know... We're begotten of addiction sometimes, addiction to persons, places, and things. And you know, mainstream media, and now social media, 
constantly bombards us with the message that we're not enough and that if you only drink this liquor, drive this car, live in this house, you will, you will self-actualize and, and be in, you know. And so what happens is, if you were born a mango, plump and colorful and ripe and juicy, but the fashion is to be a banana, slim and yellow and sometimes speckled if you're too ripe, the media tells you, if you wear this perfume, you'll be a banana. If you live in this neighborhood, you'll be a banana. If you, if you associate with this set of people and wear these clothes, drive this car, belong to this club, you'll be a banana. And so you are a mango, you know, and you try your best. Wear the perfume, drive the car, live in the neighborhood, choose friends that look banana-ish to you, um, that speak banana language and you try your best to be a banana. You know what ha happens? You end up being neither a good mango or a good banana because you can't be what you're not. If we can just remember that we are begotten. And you know, the mango isn't saying to the banana, I'm nicer, I'm better, I'm, I'm more in than you, nor is the banana saying, Chow, you missed the boat, man. I'm me aware of, you know, pre this. I'm the one that holds the sway these days. No, they are perfectly, perfectly contented to be who God created them to be. And you know, I never forget when I, I got the call to ministry. I got two calls. One was from God, but Reverend Emma actually voiced it. And there was no telling her no, you know. You just said, what do I have to do? <laughs> you know? She said, well, follow back on me and I will show you. But somebody said to me, well, what's going to be different about you when you become a minister? And I said, nothing. I said, I, of the night of my ordination, I said it in the presence of Dr. Candice Beckett. I said, Father, are you call me, me never call you. So take what you get. I am going to change nothing except that I am going to allow my light to shine. So some people don't like my outspokenness and some people call me Irreverent John, which I love that name anyhow, um, because I say the first most convenient thing that come to my mouth, I used to get beaten for it, but I got it from my mother, my beloved late Daisy. So I used to get beaten for it, but she was actually seeing in me what? The mirror of herself. And you know, friends, the people in your life are there as mirrors of you. They are there to show you who you are. And I can tell you, the th and this is from deep experience, the things that irritate you in others, take another look inside yourself. All of, the, of what you are reacting to negatively is somewhere deep inside you waiting to be healed. And for me, the meaning of Christmas really is that that coming of that tender young baby, and you know, it, 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 the whole story, even if it's, it actually never goes so, it's such a beautiful story of a humble child being born in very less than, less than perfect circumstances, coming with the message to love one another because we are divine. If you're a mango, you are divine. If you're a banana, you are divine. So don't allow the world to tell you that you are begotten of something less than your greatness, your beauty, and your reason for being. You know, some people believe that they've come from a line of people who had a particular illness. And so they think that their lot in life is to continue that tradition because it is, it is hereditary. Mash down that lie. The only thing that is hereditary is your godness. The goodness from which you came, streaming clouds of glory from the creator of all life, all things, all people, all beauty, all truth. And so, 
Jesus once asked his disciples, you know, I think it was Matthew 16, verses 13 or 13 to 17. He said, and I quote, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? Who do I say? What do I say about me? We would say in Jamaica. And the disciples said, <laughs> well, Master, the, the, uh, some say that you're John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus asked the million dollar question, but who you say maybe? Who do you say I am? I can just imagine the embarrassed silence. You know, can you imagine these men, you know, they're, they were fishermen and tradesmen and rough people of the soil. And all of this high-flown philosophy of, you know, wh whom do people say that I am, you know, and all of that. Pass them by, you know. They just love this energy that, that emanated from the person that had discovered his divinity and was telling them that it belonged to them also. And so they, they kind of, you can just imagine, they're looking for an answer. Remember when you're in school and teacher asks a question and you're afraid, to, you know the answer, but you're afraid to say it because you, you think you might be wrong and you're going to sound stupid and the rest of the class going to laugh at you. And I believe it was Peter who said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ. You are the principle of sonship. And oh my God, just the thought of it, that maybe that too could apply to me and to everybody else in this boat on this journey is just mind-boggling and breathtaking and ultra-wonderful. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Can you just turn to somebody near you at home or in the sanctuary and say, you are the Christ, the son or daughter of the living God. You are the Christ, the daughter of the living God. You are the Christ, the daughter, the daughter, the son of the living God. Jesus. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, Simon the son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father in heaven. You know what Jesus was saying? You can't tell who may be by looking at what may have on. You can't tell who may be by looking on him in my face. You can't tell who may be by what car may drive and what neighborhood may live in. You can't tell who may be by who my friend them is. It is the father within. The intuition, that means intuition, the teacher within you, that has the answer for you this Christmas, my friends, about who you are, a son or daughter of the living spirit almighty. What a gift. Now, if that ain't good news, you tell me what is. Good news. Everybody is a son or daughter of the infinite invisible. And so that brings me to your assignment. You know you have to get an assignment. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, my friends, is to contemplate the truth of that saying, I am the son or daughter of the living God. That's the first part of your assignment. Just contemplate it and write it down in your journal. Write something to the effect of, I am a spiritual being. I am whole and free. I am master of my destiny. Let us say that. I am a spiritual being. I am whole and free. I am master of my destiny. And the other part of your assignment is to begin practicing to see the divinity in others. You know, I have a friend whose four-year-old grandson is into making mud pies. Any of you remember making mud pies when you were little? Yeah. Not a very um, clean pastime. And the, <laughs> the mother wanted him to come in and she said, come inside at time to bathe and tidy. You're a dirty little boy. You see how early we get the labels put on us? You're rude. 
you're too back chat, you have too much, you have, you have too much lip. It puts on, it's put on us very early, you know. I was listening to uh, Liz Terry's wonderful interview with Denise Williams about her upcoming spiritual um, prosperity adventure, and Liz was talking about the power of yes and no. And she said, just think back how early you began to be told no. No, don't touch that. No, be careful. No, that is grandma's um, Wedgwood vase. No, you're going to drop that um, juice on your nice dress that I just starched and put you in for, uh, for service. It's my Lord of mercy, you'll drop it upon your frock. We have to go change you. No, no, no. Those of you that have grandchildren and children, see if you can go a whole day without saying no to them. It's very hard. Because you see, the little boy walking right along the, the wall there, so on Seymour Avenue, balancing. And of course, the first thing in your mind is, Lord have mercy, and parents, leave him with me. If him ever drop and broke anything, I'm in deep trouble. No! And of course, when you say no, you distract him. You say you're going to fall. And when you say you're going to fall, he makes a picture in his mind of what? Falling. See, this is the principle of neurolinguistic programming that Liz Terry teaches so wonderfully. Instead of that, if you could say, wow, what wonderful balance you have. Let me see if you can come down as easily as you went. By the time you're hot, you know, you're out, you know. <laughs> Trust me. But, that's a but with one T. Practice saying positive things to the people that you meet this Christmas, and particularly to the children. Because this is not a dirty little boy. This is a little boy with dirty hands and feet and clothes. And the way we can, we can begin to learn how to see the Christ and the divinity in people is to stop labeling. This person is a gone man. This woman don't have any, any, any dress sense. How, how she could have wear that come at church? Stop labeling. Even when you put good labels, that's a nice person. You know what you're doing? You are breaking the ninth commandment. Anybody remember what the ninth commandment is? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And you know, when you, you bear false witness by saying unkind things or putting unkind labels on other people, you are bearing false witness. But even worse than that, we bear false witness against ourselves. Every time you say, I am, and say something negative, you are putting a label on yourself that is dissing God. Reverend, I don't feel good today. I'm not in a good place. I am not in a good place. This is the universe that the God, the, the God put you in, you know, and say, have dominion and spread love and joy. I'm not in a good place. You are dissing the creator, and that is what is meant by bearing false witness. Stop bearing false witness against yourself and others and begin to affirm your beauty, your greatness, your potential, your capability, and the beauty, potential, and capability of every single person that you meet on the path. Because, friends, they may have dirty hands and feet, hands and feet and faces soiled by the vicissitudes of life, their experiences sometimes in the gutter, but that does not make them dirty. That means that they need washing off. And you have the gift of bringing them the good news. And that good news is that we are all incarnations of the one God. Incarnations just as Jesus was, of all the potential, all the goodness, all the beauty, all the joy, all the wonder, all the miracle of being a son or daughter of the living God. And so my prayer for you this Christmas is the deep knowing that the Christ indwelling is the law of your life. 
By this law, by this divine principle, my friends, you are the purveyor of the good news that we can accomplish whatever we desire because we are the sons and daughters of the royal household of God. We need only recognize the divinity in ourself and in every other self and believe in our hearts the good news that God so loved that he gave the world you. Namaste. wasn't it? <laughs> to recognize that we are the Christ in Christmas. You know, it's the Christ Mass, celebration of that Christ principle that Jesus knew so well and demonstrated so well throughout his life. And as we embody this principle, we then spread the love that we are called to be. We are the Christmas present. So now, we have a musical item, which is going to get your feet tapping. Please welcome Carol Charlton and her doo-wop singers. <laughs> <laughs> morning when the stars them getting thin from a squatter window a woman start to sing holy 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 in the God word settle down just like gentle dew upon the morning ground. Holy, holy, holy. Like sunshine upon the bay, see this baby loving his tear, him comfort.
Just give me one more line of that Trinidad God do it for two. Do. Amen. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Duap Duap Girls. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> Friends, please stand and say the prayer of Jamaica with me. And it's on your screen. Together. The radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island, Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truth of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, health, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established. And so it is. And please remain standing for our next hymn, which is Glory, Hallelujah. Come hear the song the angels sing on that first Christmas night. It is a song of peace and love, a song of joy and light. Glory, glory to God, hallelujah, glory, glory, amen. Glory, glory to God, hallelujah, glory, glory, amen. Glory, glory to God, hallelujah, glory, glory again. Let the whole world sing, hallelujah, peace, goodwill to all men. Every song the angels sing still comes to you and me. It is the song of the Savior born to set the captive free. Glory, glory to God, hallelujah, glory, glory. Glory, glory to God, hallelujah, glory, glory, amen. Glory, glory, glory to God, hallelujah, glory, glory again. Let the whole world sing, hallelujah, peace, goodwill toward men. Mother, father, sister, and brother, raise your voice and sing. Peace, goodwill to everybody, glory to the King. Glory, glory to God, hallelujah, glory, glory, amen. Glory, glory to God, hallelujah, glory, glory, amen. Glory, glory to God, hallelujah, glory, glory again. Let the whole world sing, hallelujah, peace, goodwill toward men. And would you take your love offering in your hand, and if you are at home and about to press the donate button, at donate.templeoflightcsl.org, just put your hand on your heart and say this blessing. Lovingly I give, joyfully I receive. Be thou fruitful, increase and multiply. Bless, prosper, and enrich everyone whom you touch, and replenish all of my financial affairs. So be it. Thank you, Father. And so it is in this consciousness.
Glory, glory to God for every person within the sound of my voice and for those who will listen later to the recording. Glory, glory, that that very song the angels sang still comes across the ages to remind us that we are begotten only of God, of good, of joy, of love, of laughter. And it is that that has brought these gifts of money substance, the consciousness of beauty, and the presence of all who share in this morning's celebration to lift this Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living up to the highest octave of divine love so that that which we speak, that which we live, that we, which we believe radiates from this center to fill this island, to fill the Caribbean and beyond our shores, to fill the entire world, indeed the cosmos, with the glory of the cosmic Christ, full of grace and truth. This is the good news of Christmas, and we proclaim it joyfully to the honor and glory of God. I truly give thanks that this is so, and so, so it is. is. Let us sing peace today. <coughs> Yes, there is peace on earth, and yes, it begins with me. Yes, there is peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as a power, family all are we. Walk with each other in perfect harmony. Yes, peace begins with me. Yes, this is the moment now. With every step I take, yes, this is my joyous fall. Please join me tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for quiet moments in the garden. And on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m., our spiritual mind healing service. And then don't miss Thursday evening at 6 p.m. when our Lifeline series brings you every ending and new beginning with Reverend Dr. Petra Veldes. And come again on the 26th, which is our Christmas Sunday celebration to just lift the entire universe with songs of praise to the honor and glory of God. And don't move. As soon as service is over, remain behind for our 10.30. It could start earlier, actually, uh, Angela. Our singing of carols to continue this, this energy of love that is the spirit of Christmas at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Namaste.